In this video, we will look at the molecular orbitals of the hydrogen molecule and apply some labels to those individual states. So we once again have our model of the full hydrogen molecule. Two nuclei, each of them is one proton, and which, which is uh, zero neutrons there. So ZA, ZB, both equal plus one. Their mass is both the mass of a single proton. We have two electrons, electron one and electron two, both weigh mass Me. We have the nuclei, which are fixed at their individual coordinates through the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, have no kinetic energy. Our electrons, they are what is our wave function is a function of the electronic wave function for our electronic Schrodinger equation. We have six pairs of particles which are interacting through the Coulomb force. So we have uh, the electron one, which is attracted to nucleus A and nucleus B with distance R1A, R1B. Electron two is attracted to nucleus A and nucleus B with distance R2A and R2B. The electrons repel one another and they're a distance R12 apart. And the nuclei repel one another at a fixed distance RAB apart from one another. Our trial wave function was a linear combination of 1s orbitals placed at each nucleus, 1sA and 1sB. So we determined in the previous video that this, there are two states, our two molecular orbitals were equal to the positive and negative linear combination of these two orbitals times the normalization constant, which I'm not going to worry about right now. So psi plus minus equals 1sA plus or minus 1sB. And our Hamiltonian was a sum of all of those terms I mentioned, kinetic energy of electron one and electron two, attraction of electron one to nucleus A, attraction of electron one to nucleus B, attraction of electron two to nucleus A, attraction of electron two to nucleus B, repulsion of the electrons from one another, and the repulsion of the nuclei from one another. All right, so what is of importance in this video is these two molecular orbitals, psi plus and psi minus. So for psi plus, these two orbitals add together, they overlap and result in an accumulation of density between the two nuclei, which is a chemical bond. So if we draw the shape of this orbital, it qualitatively looks like this. We have a sphere here and a sphere here. They overlap to form some kind of oval-like structure. The, the coloring indicates the phase of the orbital where I'm just indicating positive with this dashed in green line. All right, so if we look at the labels that we applied to this based off our last couple videos, down the internuclear axis, this is cylindrically symmetric, so it is a sigma orbital. The overlap of S orbitals is always going to form sigma orbitals in diatomics. And, it's in, and the inversion center here in the middle it is symmetric with respect to that. So this is in fact a Gerada uh, sigma orbital. In addition to that, since the overlap is positive, there's an accumulation here, a resulting chemical bond. This is a sigma G bonding orbital. So there's no additional label for bonding orbitals. It just doesn't have what we're going to give to the other state. For psi minus, we have the difference between these two between these two atomic orbital basis functions. So what that results in is a node in between the two nuclei. So there's a part at which the electron density goes to zero. So what happens there is we have a resulting change in phase of our molecular orbital on different sides. So we have positive over here, negative over here. So this is also a sigma orbital. If we look at it down the z-axis, it's still cylindrically symmetric rotating around the z-axis, but if relative to this inversion center, it has different uh, phases on each side of the inversion center. When you invert to the opposite side, you always change signs. So that means it is anti-symmetric with respect to inversion, or ungerata. So this is a sigma u orbital. In addition to that, there is a depletion of density between the two nuclei. This node here causes density to push, be pushed to the outside, pushes the energy up above the energy of two hydrogen atoms separated. So this, in fact, results in antibonding. So this sigma u is an antibonding orbital, which we indicate by this superscript star up there. 
So sigma U star antibonding orbital and a sigma G bonding orbital. What we can do now is take these two molecular orbitals and build an orbital diagram out of them. So what we started with was a reference state of 1s of hydrogen atom A and 1s in hydrogen atom B. If these were infinitely far apart with one electron each, they would just be the energies of two separate hydrogen atoms in these 1s orbitals. So one electron from each, 1s orbital contributing to the result. They come together, the orbitals overlap, they form the positive and negative linear combinations. They result in a sigma g bonding orbital and a sigma u star antibonding orbital. So what we do there is we draw dotted lines down to a lower energy state, the one sigma g bonding state, and dotted lines up to the higher energy sigma u star antibonding state. Since this is the first sigma g bonding orbital, we label it as one sigma g. This is the lowest energy sigma u star antibonding orbital, so we label it as one sigma u star. And then with this diagram, we just take however many electrons we have and start filling up according to the Aufbau principle. Start with the lowest energy orbital and do spin up electrons in, in each orbital you can. And then once you've done that, uh, repeat with spin down electrons, go up until you don't need to go up anymore. So with two electrons here, we can take a spin up and a spin down electron in the one sigma g uh, bonding orbital. So this means that our ground state of the H2 molecule is going to be one sigma G2. We have two electrons in a sigma G bonding orbital, which we determined from this diagram, which we got from our orbitals, which we got from our Hamiltonian and the linear variational method applied to this molecule for the H2 molecule.